So what we did before is like, of course, we already generated like an attribute, right? We already we had this curve U attribute across our curve that what we generated with the uh, uh, with the resample down there of a uh, way up there. So what we can do is make uh, let's just do a wrangle for this one. Let's set some p scales, and we have this curve U, which is zero to uh, one. And if it's zero to one space, we can put it in our in a in a ramp. And uh, then if we put it in a ramp, we have some control, right, over where are we going to gather points, um, where are we, like how big are they going to be? Let's just do the scales first. So let's say f at p scale. So float at float p scale f p scale equals channel ramp. So c h ramp uh, scale. And let's do it on the curve u. Curve U right. close bracket. Let's press create. So you can see we get a uh, ramp now. You can see this is going to be the same as our curve U. So if we're now going to have a look at this thing. So this is obviously inverted. So now they're very small down the bottom and they're very big down there. So we don't want that. We probably want something more along these lines. Maybe. And let's make a multiplier here as well. So let's just say p scale times equals channel float multiply multiply right and we have an extra control here for the scale as well something like that and maybe we want a little bit less of these things so that looks pretty good. Um, so let's, I guess, set this thing, say it's going to be our P scale. Now let's copy and paste this thing. And with this one, let's just keep our ramp. Let's say F, uh, so let's say just maybe F at scatter. Or this is maybe say emit, maybe it makes more sense. I'm not sure if scatter is the default uh, attribute, I don't think so. Say scatter. Now we have an attribute called scatter with a ramp. And in our scatter here, we can say density attribute scatter. And oh, it's not scatter, emit. All right. So now we have this ramp. You see, now we can sort of control where our points are scattered. So we don't want anything down below. For some reason, it's st scattering one point way down there. Which we don't want. We can just blast that away, I guess. So I'm just going to blast the zero point. Is it zero? Oh, it's the fifth point. And we're gonna sort points. We're gonna say a reverse point. So then this one is gonna be the zeroed one. So I'm inverting the point count. Oh, no, it's still not the zeroed one. Okay, then I'm just gonna do something else. Then I'm just gonna say, if, P dot y, so the y position is below, let's say, so one, remove point. So first input and the current point number, all right. So that's gonna delete that one. Magnifique. All right, uh, so let's just have a look. Okay, so we probably want them to be distributed to be a little bit lower. So let's call this remove. We're probably gonna, of course, gonna tweak this whenever we're gonna. Uh, let's, okay, this one is disappearing there. Does it have to do with this or does it? Okay, so I think we have a problem here, maybe. Let's just try. 
Okay, so we cannot really use this because this seems to be jumping around too much. So maybe what we want to do differently is, uh, let's say, let's just gull them like we did here and then just scatter them like that. Let's make this a uh, remove, All right? So we're going to have a slider where we're going to be deleting them and we're just going to have control here. And then this one is going to be cool to call the, uh, the bottom part. Let's call this cooling. So I think this should be work. It should work. Let's see. Look, still some stuff. Okay. So that doesn't work. Then we're going to say if curve U is below, because our curve U should remain standard and still having some issues. So I'm going to figure out what's going on here. So what we're going to do is we're going to do it another way. We're just going to use a carve. Just going to, so just put down a carve. Let's remove our curling. And with the carve, we're just going to carve out the spline in the beginning. And now everything works perfect. All right. So. This works quite okay. Let's change our B skills a little bit. We could randomize this a little bit if we wanted to. We could do an attribute randomize and just say B scale and do say uh, multiply the existing value. I'm gonna just say 0.8. Just gonna randomize it a little bit. Right, so that's quite cool. Now, what we wanna do is let's work a little bit more on our rolling out secondary curves and then let's learn how we can sort of time offset these based on what we're doing here.